is almost similar to the caterpillar and the butterfly. Mm. In short, we have to understand the process, identify who we are. Think about that caterpillar. Mm -hmm. The caterpillar crawls on the ground. It's considered to be dirty, ugly, and hairy. It's not favorable. Mm -hmm. The farmers hate it because it killed the productivity. It eat mm -hmm. the crops. So imagine if the caterpillar was trying to be his friends, the butterfly. He looking at the friends fly and soar, got these beautiful colors. Colors. That's how we are sometimes. Yeah. We in this state, we look at the millionaires. We look at the people that's successful. And we try to be it instead of become it. Mm -hmm. So at that point, if the caterpillar tried, he's going to become hateful. He's going to become resentful. He damn them might want to commit suicide mm. because he can't do it. <clears throat> but if he goes into that cocoon, if he goes through the process of metamorphosis, his own transition, then his own problems, his own behavior, his own issues that he work on, he mesh it. Then he can come out in his present state that he couldn't do things in his past state because he understood the process. Hello, everyone. This is Andre Barrard with the Yes to Real Estate podcast show. Super excited to have you here. Can't wait to share the information that we have for you in store today. Um, big shout out to the team because you cannot have a great investment or growth without a team. So big shout out to CCN Network. Big shout out to Michael, um, our marketing guy, along with Voss and Jenny with marketing. Thank you to Ms. Diamond, our transaction coordinator, Ms. Mariah, our buyer's agent, and my partners, Javon, and also Ashley when it comes to investing. Um, I'm also a top producing agent, and we are on pace to do $30 million in transaction. I said $30 million. Yeah, I know, yeah. I hear you. I hear you. $30 million <laughs> in transaction. Mm -hmm. So big thank you to the team, the mindset, and the team. I'm also an entrepreneur. Um, we, we do new construction, flips, uh, help people buy homes and sell homes. So we are doing very well with the Yes Real Estate team. So we are excited for our today guest with some great, great information. Um, today we're talking about coaching, entrepreneur coaching and mindset. And when the team and I thought about who can we bring in, we said, let's bring in the best. Mm -hmm. Right. And so today Thanks. we have Mr. Elgin. Let's welcome Mr. Elgin to the show. <laughs> Hello, Ms. Elgin. How are you? I'm great. Yourself? Appreciate you. Good, yeah, me it's good to have you. Good to have you. Good to have you. So, Mr. Elgin. Can you please tell the millions of people who's watching a little bit about yourself? Well, my name is Elgin McFerrin. I'm originally from Memphis, Tennessee. I Memphis. Moved, Memphis, Tennessee. Yeah. I moved him to Houston to pretty much help assist with my growth and my development. One thing about life, we have to understand this. It's not based on potential, but it's based on our mindset. Yeah. So it's just like a seed. An apple seed isn't an apple, but it has the potential to be the apple. So... It has to be placed in the right environment, under the right circumstances, and then water and nurture. So Houston was a place to help nurture and water and help my wow. visions come into existence. Wow. So you moved to Houston not knowing anyone? Not at all. Just jump clean out wow. on foot. So, okay, why did you pick Houston out of all the other major major cities? Now, when I tell people this, they think I'm crazy, but literally it's just a vision. Uh, so, You're not crazy? No, it's yeah, just yeah, a vision. Not, yeah. I just acted on it. But um, I, I started with barbering. Yeah. So back in the day, of course, I'm from Memphis. I went through some things. I was in the streets and I had to go through some situations to grow like most of us. Yeah. And so when I came home, uh, I ended up getting involved in barbershops. Okay. And so when I had my barbershops, I used my barbershops as community base. I had GED classes, workshops. Mm. I started a program called Cuff of Can Goods where I allowed gentlemen to get their haircuts for five non-perishable items. And then we re redistribute those items back into the community. Wow. And so uh, one day, an elder gentleman came into the shop. He was like, young man, you got a gift. Because mm -hmm. my ability to speak, I could always hold audience and inspire people. Yeah. I had no idea that God was going to develop a talent. Mm. Attached to my gift mm. so that I can fulfill my purpose. So the man he told a talent me, attached to your gift. gift so that I can feel, I fulfill it. my purpose. Yeah. So the gentleman, he was like, uh, he said, You ever thought about doing a seminar workshop? I didn't really know what a seminar workshop was at that yeah. particular point. But I was always a, a activist, not an activist to the sense of like uh pro-black, anything of that nature, but yeah. I always took action. Mm. Anytime I had a goal, a vision in my mind, I just Stepped on it. Wow. So I got the research and I called my partner. I said, well, let's do a conference. Let's do a seminar. We put together a fly in a, probably about 24 hours. We moved around. We didn't know nothing about 30 day out promotion, 60 day out promotion. So we did it. We had about 14 days. So we went around and we shopped it around, man. And, uh, I thought probably about 10, maybe 15 people going to be there. Yeah. I knew I would have some friends and family come. 
little to my uh, excitement that I had, we came, the room had about 50 people and it was over a hundred people stand up room only. Wow. Stand up room only. Wow. And I knew then I had a calling. Yeah, I knew. Wow. Yeah, got the flaw for this. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's amazing to have a vision, to have a mission and implement that mission and to see the people come out. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow. Man, and I just man. jumped and moved to Houston at that at that point. The next day, uh, my lease was expiring on my shop. So the next day I prayed about it and God said jump and I jumped. Wow. And you're here in Houston adding so much great value mm -hmm. to what you're doing. Man, Elgin, that was powerful. We, we haven't even started yet. Not at all. Nah, we're I'm still ready. at the intro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's amazing. So Elgin, I also like to talk about because when you understand the reason why and how people connect, I think it's important for people to understand that connection with the right people is crucial to go to the next level, right? Correct. So to tell the people about how did we meet? I met you through uh, the Circle Wealth. Yeah. Yeah, Circle Wealth is a great organization. We are part of a whole bunch of entrepreneurs who got a positive mindset. We all have receipts on some of the things we've been able to exceed and excel through yeah. in our particular industries, and we came together to empower the community. Wow, that's amazing, yeah. amazing. Shout out to the Circle Wealth, Isaac, the, C the COO, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, thank you for that. Um, and um, you're doing amazing things, well, right? You. So super excited to have you here. So let's dive deep. So, okay, so tell us a little bit more about what you do um, here in Houston. You're coaching entrepreneurs, right? Correct. All right, entrepreneur coaching. Correct. Right. So how did you get started in entrepreneur coaching? Uh, to be honest with you, like a natural gift at one particular point. Like someone can say anything. They can say, uh, you can try me now. You can say anything. You can say barbecue restaurant, uh, dog shop, anything. And I just had a, a natural inclination to be able to mesh ideas together, put them on paper and bring them, bring flesh into them. Mm -hmm. And so I got around, got coaches myself. So, uh, Dr. Eric Thomas, number one speaker in the world. Yes. Uh, he's one of my mentors. Shout so, out to ET. Um, I got trained through him through the organization. So I'm a certified extreme execution coach. I'm also a speaker. So when I got around certain people to help identify my gift, I was able to continue to grow it and just sharpen and sharpen it. And I end up developing and being able to impact a lot of people's lives. And wow. that's something I stand on. You so you you identify your gift. Identification. And then you went and got and you went and paid Correct. someone. Yeah, you have to. to yes. To to get coaching, to edify, to sharpen your skills. But see, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. You know, but before you identify things, you go through a, a small state of confusion where you mm -hmm. really don't understand things. Yeah. Because when you first stated, you said, I do some amazing things. Mm -hmm. But before it's amazing, there's a maze. Yeah. So you feel like you continue going through, going through things, but you got to stop going through things and begin to grow through them. Mm -hmm. And the only way to grow through it is the first step is awareness. 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 Awareness of your situation. Aware of your situation, aware of yourself, aware of your flaws, your weaknesses. Like in business, we call it the SWOT analysis. Mm -hmm. Your strength, your weaknesses, your opportunities, and your threats. Mm -hmm. I have to be aware of who I am, where I'm at currently, realistically, where I'm project myself for, where I want to go, what I want to be. And in the middle, it's a gap of what I must become and the things I must give up in order to go up. Mm -mm -mm. That's amazing. Wow, that's powerful. <laughs> that, is, that is powerful. Wow. So entrepreneur coaching, right? And um, identifying, paying for training, learning through the process, growing. What would be the next step uh, after you, you, you got started in this? Why is entrepreneur coaching important? Why do we need it? Everyone need a coach. Even the best had coaches. You think about Michael Jordan or Kobe Bryant, they had coaches. Yeah. So at some point, we can only take ourselves to certain levels, but when we're able to connect with different energies, we're able to spar and we're able to multiply. Mm -hmm. Like I said, one of my favorite books, <clears throat> Be Fruitful and Multiply. A lot of people kind of um, diminish that to a form of reproductivity, mm -hmm. when it's about multiplying, multiplying everything that you do. If you have one dollar, you multiply it to 10. If you yeah. have a, a vision, you multiply it into, you know, uh, crystallization. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, you have to recognize things. Yeah. And anything that you recognize, you can crystallize in your life, but you got to first energize it. Mm -hmm. And I think energy is very important because we talk about money all the time. Yeah. And this is one of my favorite acronyms about money. People think they have money problems when they ask you how they don't. No. Money st simply stands for my own natural energy yield. Mm. That's it. Whatever skill set you have, whatever gift you have, whatever talent, you submit that energy and you work on that energy and it crystallizes into money. What's another word for money? Opportunity. 
Man, that's, that, I ain't heard it that way before. <laughs> Man, you're right, opportunity. But you know how people, they say dinero, they say oh, dinero. cash, okay, but yeah, yeah. currency. Currency, yeah. What's another word for energy? Currency. currency. Yeah. So when we submit our energy and our currency to the universe or to a particular task, it come back in another form of currency, which is money. Mm. My goodness, Elgin. You bring you bring the fire, the, the emoji mm-hmm. fire. <laughs> so the millions of people are watching or would never would not be the same after hearing this message. Mm-hmm. So let, let's let's dive deeper. So um, mm-hmm. mindset season, right? So let's talk about shift versus maintenance. Okay. Okay. So shift. What do we mean about that? It's just like in a car. You know, you go from drive, you go to reverse, and you continue to shift. And sometimes you have to be neutral. Mm-hmm. And then maintenance is if things are going appropriately and going good, if it's working, you continue to maintain it. So just say shift. shift. If you're in a negative particular, if you're in a negative mindset or a negative space, or you can be in a great space, our great can always be greater. Mm-hmm. So we have to understand when to shift and when to maneuver, just like seasons. Yeah. I look like a, a, a crazy man with a... Uh, of uh, uh, fur on in the Houston heat. Yes. Because I didn't shift according to the season. Yeah. So we have to know when to spend, when to save, when to invest, when to read, when to study, and when mm. to apply. So we have to be able to shift. You yeah. know, because if you stay the same, how can you evolve? You're right. Life is about evolution. And when it comes down to maintaining things, I think the key to maintaining is understanding who you are and where you are. Yeah. In addition to whose you are. So just say, for instance, you got a vision vision with Yes to Real Estate. You said you're on the course of uh, hitting 30 million, right? 30 million. So <clears throat> in order for you to achieve that, you're on the course of the main things working. So you have yeah. to maintain it. Yeah. So in essence, we have to be able to maneuver through the maneuver. Mm. A lot of bull crap is going to continue to come in our life. A lot of adversity and a lot of illusions. Because at the end of the day, we think we got complications. We really don't. Yeah. It's an illusion. Yeah. Like a musician. You think you saw her cut in half, but you didn't. Mm-hmm. It's an optical illusion. The only time it becomes a reality if you give it attention. Because in essence, nothing has no power over us other than that in which we give it through conscious thought. Mm-hmm. You, he's, he's, wow. Nothing this, this, this has fresh no manner. power. This is fresh manner. Say, say that part one more time. Nothing has no power over us other than that in which we give it through conscious thought. Wow. Coach, I'm going to give you an example of how powerful mindset having a coach is, okay? I remember we was buying a run, uh, buying investment property, right? And the hard money lender told us at the last minute, hey, we're, we're not going to be able to give you this 150000 for this property. Mm-hmm. Well, 110. So I had two days to raise the 110. Okay. So a normal uh, a person who's thinking in a, in a mindset of poverty was will be, I can't get it done. I don't have the money. It's no way of doing it. Let me call it off. Mm-hmm. But my mindset was, number one, my integrity is on the line because I told this person I was going to buy this property. Number two is if you're thinking from the mindset of abundance and opportunity, this is a great opportunity to give someone else to be a part of an investment deal. Mm. So... I used this opportunity to go and raise $110,000 in two days. And guess mm. what? We raised it in one. Mm. Because I came from a position of mindset of, hey, I'm giving you an opportunity to make this amount of money on this deal. Are you in? Mm. And they was in. So I took a situation to where it, it shifted. Right. Mm-hmm. I was in drive and then I got that bad news that Joker came to neutral and park and I almost went in reverse. Right. Mm, yeah. <laughs> right. So and then I learned a valuable lesson that you dictate and, t- and control how you handle a situation. Mm. So from my coaching, I, re- I was able to handle this situation and and nobody knows about it except for the millions of people now. <laughs> and it's crazy because when you say shift, yeah. what I'm noticing with that particular example, you shifted your belief system. Mm. See, belief is two, it goes in two different forms of fashion. See, faith is a belief in the things that can happen, even though you may not be in the circumstances that it will happen. Yeah. And doubt is a belief that things won't happen. So anytime you believe what you energize or what, it will crystallize. Yeah. So you believe in things that could, you also believe in things that wouldn't. It's this story about this gentleman he was sitting in the class. Is uh he was in a in a math class, a calculus class, right? Mm-hmm. And so the professor put this 
magnificent problem on the board, big, long problem. And it was an unsolvable problem. Mm. So the professor thought. That's what he'd been conditioned to believe because he had a training. So he did class after class, year after year, teaching this particular method. But this student, he was up all night and he nodded off in class. He nodded off. He missed what the professor was talking about. So he hurried up and woke up. He hurried up. He wrote the problem down. He went home. He worked it. He worked it. He worked it. He solved it. So he go back in class. The professor like, how in the world did you solve it? So he was able to solve it. Why? Because he was never conditioned mm -hmm. on the basis that it was unsolvable or that it could be done. Mm -hmm. So the moment that you saw a problem, it wasn't a problem to you. It was a project. Mm -hmm. So you have to shift our connotation with how we utilize and how we speak on things. Mm -hmm. The moment you say problem, it's like it freezes the possibilities of growth. But if you say project, it inspires you to growth because most problems don't get solved, mm -hmm. but most projects get completed. Mm -hmm. Change your vocabulary, change your language, change how you opportunity. Talk to yourself. Yes. Wow, that's that's powerful. And that is exactly what I felt like to where when I presented the opportunity. I came from a position of adding value that you can join this and make money, not telling them, hey, I need your help. If I don't get your help, the deal won't get through. Mm -hmm. No, hey, it's an opportunity for you to make a lot of money on this. Are you in? This episode is brought to you by a hoteling insurance company with Jason Noble, providing insurance for your personal home, investment home, rehab, flip, and new construction. Now let's get back to cultivating community. Yes. Opportunity. That's, a, that's an amazing word that I don't think most people understand the basis of it. Yeah. Opportunity. So first you have op. So anytime you have an opportunity, you're going to face opposition that's going to mm. appear to trick you out of that particular position. Then tune. You have to tune into your destiny, tune into your calling, and then unity. What are you unified with? What are you aligned with? Because we came here with everything we possess. The apple tree is inside the apple seed. The mm. oak tree is inside the acorn. So we try to be something that we're not. But we really got to become it until mm. it comes to be. How do we become it? We have what? to be... I'm sorry, go no, ahead. No, no, go no, ahead. no. So how do we become it? The process. It's, uh, it's going to sound mundane mm -hmm. and somewhat uh, cliche, mm -hmm. but it's almost similar to the caliper and the butterfly. Mm -hmm. In short, we have to understand the process, identify who we are. Think about that caterpillar. Mm -hmm. The caterpillar crawls on the ground. It's considered to be dirty, ugly, and hairy. It's not favorable. Mm -hmm. The farmers hate it because it killed the productivity. It eat mm -hmm. the crops. So imagine if the caterpillar was trying to be his friends, the butterfly. He looking at the friends fly and soar, got these beautiful colors. Colors. That's how we are sometimes. Yeah. We in this state, we look at the millionaires, we look at the people that's successful, and we try to be it instead of become it. Mm -hmm. So at that point, if the caterpillar try, he's going to become hateful. He's going to become resentful. He damn them might want to commit suicide mm. because he can't do it. <laughs> but if he goes into the cocoon, if he goes through the process of metamorphosis, his own transition, then his own problems, his own behavior, his own issues that he work on, he mesh it. Then he can come out in his present state that he couldn't do things in his past state because he understood the process. My Lord, the process. I love the analogy too. Because yeah. when you think about the caliper, you think about all the objections that it faced from, from crawling, birds trying to eat it as well, <laughs> right? So it's, it's, it's surviving to get to that next level. Mm. And understand that one day I will get there, but but I must go through the process. If you do things every day, it's about just say for instance, if you're on a you're on a course to hit thirty million, right? Yeah, yeah. But it wasn't always like that. No. I know you have a story, right? Yeah. yeah. So in the, in the process, you have this story. How did it start? Yeah. So when you started here to there, that's called what a graduation. Yeah. But in order to graduate, we have to do things gradually, Lee. increment. Incremental change, incremental process, progress. Yeah. Just one percent. One percent is a lot. Yeah. One percent of a uh, what? Of a, a certain quantity of a book, a page book. What is that? Ten pages. Yeah. So if you do ten pages a day, yeah. that's what twenty books a year. Yeah. Yeah. If you walk one mile a day, that's 360 miles. I mean, wait, 365 miles a year. So it's just about taking that one step in one way, and one day you will achieve your goal. Wow, being consistent. Mm -hmm. it, I, I agree with that. I definitely agree with it. Wow. <laughs> wow, <laughs> wow. Consistence wow. overpower resistance. Wow. This is, this is powerful, Elder. 
for, for the millions of people watching, this this is fresh manna <laughs> that we are getting from, from Elgin, and it's super, super amazing. Um, so your, your knowledge and your wisdom that you are sharing with us, where, where do you get that from? Uh, definitely from the creator. You know, I'm yeah. a believer, so yeah. definitely that. I always had uh, a knack for it. Yeah. Even when I was a child, the thing about it is my environment at that time wasn't conducive to my goals. So mm -hmm. I got caught up in a lot of things that I thought was punishment that ended up being a preparation for my target audience. Yeah. You know, I used to have visions of me speaking since I was like five years old. Yeah. Uh, my mother, she used to go to church on Saturdays to do the church bulletin in preparation for Sunday. And while she was in the office, I'd be on the stage and I'd be just talking and speaking. But back then, nothing consists of a motivation of speaking. I'm from deep yeah. south. Yeah. So if you want, if you were speaking in that manner and it wasn't God oriented, it was blasphemous. Mm -hmm. So I get spanked or ridiculed for playing with God, not knowing that I was getting a preview mm. of my purpose. Wow. What was ahead? Mm -hmm. Wow. How, how do we get the right mindset for the millions of people watching that say, man, this is great information? But, but Coach Elgin, how do I get the right mindset? What must I do? Sometimes I think that we don't need to do it by ourselves, but sometimes we have to do it by ourselves. Mm -hmm. But if we're if we, if we in a position to get coaching, I say get coaching. So it's good to have one-on-one -on -one coaching or group coaching. You have to invest. However, I don't want there to be an obstacle because some people may be listening and say, I don't have the funds right now. Yeah. But remember, I said money, excuse me, Money stands for my own natural energy yield. So your energy and your mindset. So you can have virtual coaches. You can start mm. reading. You can watch podcasts like Yes to Real Estate. Yeah, you can, uh, you can tune in. You can communicate with people through their DMs. And how I did it, I wanted to speak. And I ended up getting mentors like Jeremy Anderson, uh, one of the top youth motivational, uh, youth motivational speakers in the world, Dr. Eric Thomas. So you have to find people that's ahead of you so you can get ahead of yourself. Oh, whoa, whoa. you're not just going to breeze through that like that was a <laughs> say, say that last for a You one have time. to find people ahead of you to get ahead of yourself. Mm. My goodness. You got to look at the 20 year old person that you are, the 30 year old, whatever age you are, and say, what can I do now to prepare for the 50 year old person? Mm. The 50 year old Andre, the 50 year old Elgin. I don't want to look back in my fit and say, I can't stand. And that damn 40 year old Elgin, yeah. man. You didn't do this, you didn't prepare, <laughs> you didn't study, you didn't invest. Man, look how you left me. Yeah. You know, so yeah. I think that it's really simple to be honest with you is you have what you want in your mind, you document it, and you stand on it. There's so many things that happens out, even with this podcast. Yeah. You know, this was something that I envisioned not knowing it was going to crystallize. Mm -hmm. uh, yesterday I was working on some things and I had to get some stuff together and it didn't work out and then I'm getting a call from another because I have a coach Yeah. don't trust a coach who don't have a coach <laughs> that's a nugget don't trust a coach that don't have a coach so they end up calling me about we do mutual coach I help her she helped me right mm -hmm. and coincidentally the problem I was working on I didn't even say anything about it and she came with a solution so when you it's I don't want to go past the law of attraction because yeah. we know that you can attract things, but in order to attract things, you must act. Mm -hmm. But we have to be careful with the things we think because worrying is also a form of law of attraction. Mm -hmm. um, and and uh, don't get religious, but I study a little bit of everything. Yeah. So I do study the Bible with other books and stuff. Yeah. But in the Bible, Apostle Paul, he said that the thing that I have feared most have, have came upon me. Yeah. Amen. So what we fear can come, but what we believe will come. So I think that we have to know who we are despite our circumstances. Yeah. Look at example Jay-Z in the projects. Nothing about where he is now. He had a promise or a vision. It could happen, but he knew it. What about a Tyler Perry? Mm -hmm. What about an Andre? Yeah. What about an Elgin? What about a you yes. that's listening right now? Yes. Wow. 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 You know, one of my favorite books is um, Stephen Covey, right? The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, right? And the last one, number seven, it says, always think with the end in mind, mm. right? So if, if you live your life with the end in mind, it would, it would be hard for you to go wrong, right? So when you think, if I say this to this person, or if I do this to this person, right? If I do something illegal in the outcome, think with the end in mind. And it was a very powerful book because everything that we do at the Yes of Real Estate brand and also the CCN network is that... We think with the end in mind. Big big shout out to our uh, owner, Jazz. She everything that you see on the set, she uh, visualize it. 
we met at the Yesa Real Estate field trip. We was it was hot under the shade tree, and we were both sweating, right? And she said, "Hey, I have a vision." Mm. She said, "I have a vision. You have a gift. We should do this." And I'm 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 sweating with her, right? And I'm thinking, okay, okay. And one thing I do know is that I'm real big on leverage partnership, right? And if you have someone on the team who has a vision, who gonna bring it together, I say, let's do it, sister. That's why I told mm. her, I said, let's do it. I'm all in. And today here with the millions of people watching, it all started under the shade tree, sweating. Mm. Think right. with the end in mind. Having the right coach. You uh you got me kind of flabbergasted. Yeah. Uh, that's amazing because it's similar. Like we look, we catch airplanes all the time. We don't even think about how they came into existence. But the Wright brothers literally built the airplane in a bicycle shop. Yeah. Think about that, a bicycle shop, a plane in a bicycle shop. So number one, no, it had never been done before. So they had all type of opposition they had to face, all type of ridicule, all type of uh, negativity they had to face. Number two, they didn't even have the things or the equipment they needed before they started, but they figured it out. And you were saying something about the mindset and how things got started. See, it starts with a thought. Mm -hmm. uh, people say, how I get started? That's how you get thought. You got three dimensions. You have thoughts, which is one dimension. You got the physical dimension, which puts you in a whole different state. You know, so it's your thoughts, but not just that. It's how you feel about your thoughts. Mm -hmm. We always say, as a man think it, so is he. No. As a man or woman think it in their heart, how you feel about it. Because you can think that you a millionaire, but if you don't feel it, mm -hmm. if you don't believe it, it won't exist. Yeah. So it starts with our thoughts, how we feel about those thoughts. <clears throat> and from how we feel about those thoughts, we create a vision. Mm -hmm. Then we reduce that vision into a goal. Then we write plans to be able to manifest that goal. We take action and then we produce results. So success is just a result. Failure is just a result, not an event. Mm. See, we think failure is an event. We think success is an event. It's not. It's a process of results. If you got an F in the class and you failed that class, you just didn't get that F. Mm -mm. It was a process. If you got bad credit, it was a process of not paying your bills, a process of not understanding financial literacy. It was a process not reaching out to someone that was ahead of you. And the result was an accumulation of bad credit, My just Lord. like success. I love that. Because when you start thinking about results and the process, it took me back to school. It was a whole semester of great decision. <laughs> I got that A plus. Praise the Lord. Now, mm -hmm. now, now, now I'm listening. Yeah, I'm listening. Yeah. It was no A plus though. But uh, <laughs> but it was it was a semester of things. So so Elgin, man, this is powerful. We can go forever, right? Mm -hmm. Can we leave the millions of people with one last thought that would change and transform their minds? I'm going to leave them with a quote by Earl Nightingale. Mm, he like said that, you like Earl, you I know like about him. Yeah, like <laughs> he said that uh, we are all self-made, mm. but it's only the successful people who will admit it. <laughs> Think about that one. We are well, one more time. Self, we are all self-made, but it's only the successful people who will admit it. So if you're in a situation right now dealing with a little financial difficulties, difficulties you made that situation. Mm. And because you made that situation, you can rectify it, you can correct it, you can build it. You have full power to control your life, but you must believe, you must stand on it, and you must really, really take action. Don't spend too much time wow. deliberating. Don't spend too much time procrastinating. I was reading John C. Maxwell's book, uh, The 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth. You familiar with yeah. it? Yeah. And in the book, he talk about the law of diminishing intent, where it states, the longer you wait to do a thing, to do, for tomorrow that you should do today, it increases the probability that it will never actually get it done. So if you hesitate, then you stop getting things done that need to be done for you to have what you need to have. My Lord. <laughs> and I just got that, that, that self-made analogy you just made because uh, we are all self-made, but only millionaires admit it. You're only millionaires admit it. Because it's, hey, I'm a self-made millionaire. Yeah. Right? People proclaim that. That, I love that. That is powerful. But not the person in prison, not the person dealing with the financial difficulty. It's he, she, them, that. Wow. But it's us that's going to take ourselves to the next phase. We got to literally be able to excel beyond our heels. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much, Coach. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so man. much, Coach. Coach, tell the millions of people how they can reach you. 
Uh, you can definitely reach me. My Instagram is uh, Elgin Mac. That's E L G E N M A C K. You tap the link in the bio. It has all my contact information, all my coaching, all my books. And for the listeners right now on this podcast, I want to give a special discount for my coaching program, for my books, everything you can think of. You just type in the uh, the discount code Winner. Just Winner. Type in the discount code Winner, and you receive different type of promotion discounts on everything that you desire. And we're going to help you get to the next phase. Wow. Everyone, let's give Coach a hand <laughs> clap. Let's give Coach a hand clap. Thank you, Coach Elgin, for this great information. Transforming is truly, truly a blessing. Self-made. And the only people who admit are the millionaires. I want to give your flowers, too, bro. This yeah. is an amazing platform. I yeah. see I see it. I yeah. see what's going on. So I appreciate you creating a platform for entrepreneurs and people to come out yeah. to be able to share their gift with the world, man, yes, by exactly. you sharing your gift with Amen. the world. Amen. Thank you so much for being here. So thank you for the millions of people who are watching. Thank you for joining us today. As Coach Elgin said, it's very, very important to understand we need coaching, hmm. right? If your coach does not have a coach, then you have the wrong coach, right? Hmm. And only the self-made millionaires are self-made. But understand that if you are broke, if you are in jail, you're having challenges, it's your, it's your fault. You are hmm. self-made for that as well. So I want to challenge everyone today, as Coach Elgin just said, so, so uh, magnificent. Let's go to the next level. Mm. I want to challenge you. Yes, to coaching. Yes, to transparency. Yes, to education. Let's say yes to training. Let's say yes to looking at yourself in the mirror and say, hey, I am the reason for my situation. Let's also look in that same mirror and say, yes, I am the reason for the growth that's going on. Let's say yes to elevation and say, let's say yes to real estate. Mm. See you at the top. See you next week. <laughs> Hello, everyone. This is Andre Barrard with the Yes to Real Estate podcast. Thank you, you for watching. Please subscribe and like and check out our other episodes right here on the Community Cultivator Network and the Yes to Real Estate podcast. See you at the top.